Hey guys, this is Brian Castro for Better Chest Training and in today's video we're going to be going over the solution to this position. It's white to play and this was originally posted in the community tab. Uh, if you haven't seen it there, go ahead and pause the video and try to solve it. And I always encourage you try to look at it as deeply as possible. Make sure you see all of the forcing moves and then uh, play the video again. Okay, this problem was on the community tab last week and uh, it is white to play and I thought it had a it's not a incredibly difficult problem but it does have illustrate a couple nice little uh, motifs so uh, let's take a look at it and as I always suggest uh, before you start just looking at random candidates try to take a look at the position and see what ideas come up and a couple thoughts here. One was this, uh, the immobility of this rook. Okay, as you can see, it cannot go to the H file. And uh, right now, at the moment, it can't go to E5. So it can only go here to F7. And it's actually blocked um, along the G file as well. So one of the ideas here might be to play something like king to F7. Okay. Uh, and furthermore, uh, so from here we see that black really only has one move. Of course, he cannot go to uh, e6 because then he'd be hanging to the pawn. Um, of course, he can't go anywhere along the g file or, or, or g7 or g8. He could go to g5, of course, and he can't go to uh, f5 or h5 or a f6 or h6 without getting captured. So. Uh, Rook to g5 is forced. Now from here, uh, when I first saw this problem, I had a couple ideas, and I toyed around with uh, rook to d8 check. Uh, also, very briefly looked at c4. Let me show you what happens here. c4 protecting this pawn, and maybe looking to try to uh, trap this king somehow. The problem is after rook to f5 check, the, king, the white king is forced away, uh, say to g6, and uh, now after rook to f4, uh, black is going to win uh, some of these white pawns. Okay, uh, going back, the other candidate I looked at was rook to d8 check, and this looks promising, uh, except that the king can get away with king to e5, and there really isn't an adequate follow-up. I did some analysis just to kind of give you an example. If we just tried to follow up here with the check, uh, of course, you could just come back here and take um, here on d5. Uh, but you could also, uh, actually, let's just take a look at that real quick. Uh, king takes d5, and then let's say I try to attack the rook now, because he's, the rook still has um, some mobility problems, but now the h file is available and we could stop our analysis there when I first solved the problem uh, but it gets uh, a little trickier or I guess it, it gets even worse for black if he tries to pursue something like um, rook to g8 and rook to h8 and then you would think here well the king can attack this rook and then take this pawn but really um, the king would be in the skewer for example king takes g4 then rook to g1 check skewers the uh, the king and the rook okay so uh, rook to g8 check did not does not look good that way so king to e5 rook to e8 check just to show you one more uh, king to f5 trying to keep the king on the side with uh, the pawn here uh, is also fine for black um, and here, here's just a line just to show you uh, b5 with the idea of deflecting with one of these pawns uh, g3 b6, c takes b6, d6, g2, and rook to e1, forced to stop this, uh, maybe with the idea of um, being able to push. But here, uh, it really, if black tries to push this here, uh, rook takes g1, rook to take g1, uh, D7, it's just too, um, it's just too close. So black cannot win this because rook to D1, king to E7, and basically uh, 
the Black King cannot get close enough to help, and uh, White or Black will have to sacrifice this Rook eventually, or put the King in perpetual check to try to uh, to stop the uh, promotion of this pawn. So this is uh, this is drawn. Okay, let's go back. So from From uh, this position, uh, basically the best that white can hope for is a draw. So let's go back a move. And from this, you might notice, okay, so now that you know that rook to d8 check doesn't work, you might start to explore uh, other moves. And you might notice that uh, this pattern here, if you put the kings in opposition uh, this way, while you're attacking the rook, you now have a mating threat, where rook to d8 check because uh, Black's pawn blocks off his uh, escape. And actually, this ends up being the solution if you look further, because uh, the natural move here, Rook takes d5, and here's where you might want to play around with it. The immediate Rook to d8 check is not uh, good enough, but if you can attack this rook here to force it away from contact with the king. Remember, all of these squares along the uh, fifth rank are unavailable to, um, to the rook. Remember, if rook to e5, then uh, rook to d8 check, even though it's not mate this time uh, because the e5 pawn is, or d5 pawn is not there, king to c6, and then uh, king takes e5, is an easy win for white. So the rook is forced, uh, if he wants to survive, to stay along the uh, along the D file because these other squares, A5, B5, and C5, are covered by white pawns. So, so let's say uh, black plays rook to D5, and of course it could be any of these squares. Then we have rook to D8 check with uh, that skewer. And that is the solution. Let me just run it from the top again, just so you can see it all in one go. So the general idea, recognizing this immobility of the rook, is to attack it. And after rook to g5, hopefully you saw that if you could attack it again, uh, you would have this uh, mating threat along with uh, this idea of skewering. Uh, and after rook takes d5, c4 is the magic move which forces this rook away from the king and after it moves away again it can move anywhere along the d file and of course it, none of the squares along the fifth rank are, are safe then we have this winning skewer with rook to d8 hey guys i hope you enjoyed that video and i hope you're able to find the solution if you didn't uh, go back and see uh, where your analysis uh, didn't match up with mine. Uh, if you found any improvements to uh, the solution, uh, please post it down below. I uh, always welcome your feedback. Uh, and also, if you like chess tactics and you want to improve that part of your game, uh, there are a lot of good resources out there. Uh, one of the ones I use are uh, tactics ebooks on Chessable. And uh, over here, I've got a video of a review of the Woodpecker Method, uh, one of uh, the many tactics books on Chessable. So check that out, and I'll see you soon.